All right, so now that I've had the channel for about two years, I've realized that I have a wide variety of audience people on this here channel. So we've got our beginners as well as our professional, and we even have the intermediate guys that are doing this stuff at a hobby level at the house. So in this here video, I wanted to break down and bring it down a little bit for the guys that are new on why we do what we do and how you can get a good outcome on doing these jobs. So we're gonna step it down a little bit. It's hard for me being I'm a painter for 28 years to kind of bring it down to that basics, but I think I need to for some of the new guys by the questions that I'm getting on the channel. So here in the booth, we have a, a VW Jetta. And this here is a new hood. We've got a new fender and a new bumper that were uh, all part of the wreck on this here vehicle. So when you're doing a car, you guys see we have this one here sanded down, but it's gray. Any of these manufacturers nowadays that make paint are only for blendable matches. So what that means is they want you to paint this fender and they want you to take the color into this here door. That way you can match up the fender. None of these here colors are gonna be recommended for panel paint. Now, we definitely do do that. We tint colors, us professionals, and get colors very close to where we do not have to blend sometimes. But that's not what the actual manufacturer of these paint companies has these chips designed for. So these here are the chips for this here color. And if you put them up to the door here, you can see that there is a wide variety of different shades that are the actual same color here for this VW. So that's the first thing you want to realize is that when you get a color for a car, there is no one color and that's the color that's going to match your car. Even though I have all these chips and I have all that big mixing bank here at this shop to mix colors, we still have to deal with color issues here in the professional level. So when you guys go out there and you pick up your paint and you paint something at the house and you realize that you don't have a match, the same things happen to us here. We just have better documentation and better ways of getting out of it, being that we've been doing it a long time. So don't feel like you're left out and you're all stuck with a bad color match. There's ways out of it. And I've told you guys before, if you were doing something at the house, maybe bring your car up to the paint store, have them look at it with their chips. Don't just give them your paint coat over the phone and have them mix you up any colors. Let's go ahead and get into this one here and start painting on this one. And we're gonna go over this and do some of the steps to ensure a good job. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is go ahead and get these parts wiped down. If you guys see this here, this is prepped with a finer sandpaper. That way, once the metallics and the paint lays on this actual here part, you're not gonna see any of the scratches from the actual sandpaper. So when you're prepping out your blend panels, you're gonna wanna prep them out finer. I use an 800 grit on all my blend panels, and that is gonna ensure that you're gonna have good adhesion Plus, you're not going to have the sand scratches once you clear this that you see when you are done with the job. So make sure you prep them out right. Check out some of my other videos on the prep work. But in this video here, we're going to go over the painting process. So the first thing we're going to do is get these parts cleaned down with a wax and grease remover. And that is going to eliminate any oils or dirt or contamination on the actual surface that we're painting. So if you paint over a dirty part, that paint is gonna react funky in that area where there is a contaminant on it. And if you have done it before, you know what I'm talking about. So make sure you clean your parts thoroughly with a wax and grease remover. That way you can eliminate oils. And then if you wanna move into some type of a water-based product after your prep saw, you can do that too to cut down on static. All right, so now that we have it all cleaned, the next step is gonna be making sure that you blow off all your parts nice and easy. You don't wanna stir up dirt in the paint booth or especially at the house if you guys are doing any kind of painting in your garage. So blow everything out outside, maybe in front of your garage, wet them down, wash them, clean them, blow them off good. And then when you bring them inside to where you're actually gonna paint them, you're gonna to wanna to blow them off nice and light. You're not gonna to wanna to kick up dirt now that everything is settled down. So once you get stuff cleaned, you're gonna blow them nice and easy, and then you're gonna move into your tack rag. And that is a cloth 
that has a little bit of a sticky solution on it but it won't leave any residue on the panel especially the ones here that i'm using if you do pick up a cheap one they are liable to leave some streaks from the glue on the actual tack rack so these here crystals i recommend them highly these are my favorite tack rag out there so once you get them cleaned you're going to blow them off nice and light and then we're going to go ahead and tack them up that way that'll take off any loose dust or debris that may have landed on it so let's go ahead and do that now what this is going to do is anything that's landed on this panel that could be lint dirt or anything like that it's going to pick it up and it's going to stick to this being that this has a substance on it that's a little bit sticky so you just run over this nice and light don't push down too much. Just glide over it nicely. I like to start from the top to the bottom. That way, if your dirt does fall off of the panel and doesn't get caught on the tack rag, you're gonna catch it on your way down. So start at the top and then bring it down. So we've got everything clean now. We've got everything tacked. And now we're gonna move into our application of the paint. So. We have a couple of new parts in here and with this line of paint that i'm using and pretty much any line of paint they're going to want you to seal a new oe part so what a sealer is is it is a non-sanding primer and what that really breaks down to is it's a primer that you do not have to sand once you put your sealer down you give it a flash time and it has a window of when you're able to put paint directly on top of that sealer without sanding it so it's made to have good holdout and when you're painting a new oem part like this you definitely want to have a sealer on it and that's going to have your best longevity for the paint job because it's not just the aspect of getting a nice finish with these jobs you want to be able to have a job that's going to last long and when these manufacturers design these paints they always use a sealer because when a rock chip is to hit that car they want to have the right amount of flex in the paint with the primers to the sealers to the base coats and everything through that way you do not have anything chipping off and wanting to peel on you so follow the recommendations of whatever paint you guys are using if they recommend that you use a sealer coat i highly recommend that when i'm doing a paint job to do a sealer so we're going to go ahead now and seal our parts we'll seal our bumper bin it's a new oe part and this is the one that's going to get the most uh activity with rocks and love bugs so you're going to want to make sure that you get it stuffed down good. This here was sanded with 600 grit on the sky pad. All the edges and everything were addressed. And some of the raw bumpers you'll use an adhesion promoter on. But this one here is a prime part. So we're going to go right into the sealer on this one. So now's the time when you want to double check everything that you're doing as you're looking over it before you put your paint on. Because once you get your paint on, it's going to be harder to fix it. So. All right, now that we have our sealer applied, that's what we do on our parts that we have repairs or if it's a new part. So our blend panel here, we are gonna put down some type of a product that is gonna help the blend actually come out nicer. So what this is here, this is a clear base coat and that is gonna put down a nice uniform finish. That way, once we put down our color, it has something to land into. So back in the day when you were using a solvent, if you would clear it, sometimes it would actually spin that because it was very dry, the solvents were. This is a water-based product that we use here. So this is the 490 wet bed we're gonna apply on this here door. And that's gonna give you a nice 
uniform blend and you guys will see here when I put it on there how this will give a nice low gloss shine to the actual blend panel. So they make this in a solvent as well as a water base. We use a water based product here so we use this on our blends to get a nice even blend. That way once you put your color on there you can get a nice even transition and it helps out the actual metallic lay nicer. All right, so I showed you these chips in the beginning of the video here. These are the variants for this here color. This is LD7XVW. So this is what each manufacturer of the paint will have in their actual paint manufacturing system. They'll give you these, that way you have different shades to check the car. So we'll bring them over to the car. This is just for you guys to see. I already have my color dialed in and I always make sure that I have my color before I enter the booth. But right away you can see that some of these aren't even in the ballpark so that's what we deal with here in the body shop and uh we got to cocktail our colors and tin them quite often so right away what i do is i eliminate what i know does not look good and right away i could see these here the ones that i'll take away so i eliminated the three and this here is the best match on here out of these variants and like i told you we're going with a different one but this is what you have from the manufacturer to check the actual color. So if you guys can see here now, this here light is a light that duplicates the sun. This here is made by Luma. And uh, this will give you a better look at the color. That way you can check it like if it was outside in the sun. You guys can see here that we're in a shop and we don't have the sunlight. So they make these tools. That way we're able to check the color and uh, verify that we have a good match so you just don't want to look at it straight on you want to check it from the side you want to check it from the bottom the top and all angles because these colors will change in different lighting and have different flops to them so we've got our color verified i just wanted to show you guys what there is in the collision world as well as some of the equipment we use to duplicate the actual sun all right so let's go ahead now and apply our base coat we let our sealer and our wet bed dry and flash off and now we'll move into our color and I'll show you some different things that I do to make sure you get a good job. All right, so we have applied our base coat on all the parts as well as the blend panel. And you can see here that I only put paint on the first 10 inches or maybe eight inches of this door. And that is what they call a blend. So that's taking the color that you have and blending it into the existing color that's on the car. And you guys can see here that you can't even see a difference in it. So a lot about getting a good blend is having a good color match. So we are gonna be panel painting the hood to the other fender. That's why you want to make sure that your color is right. And me being a professional and doing this a long time, I am able to do those type of things. So make sure that you take that into consideration and make sure that you get your color as close as you can before you even attempt to blend. Because if your color is off, you're going to see it no matter what. So the better the color match, the better your blend is going to be. So make sure you get all your edges of the paint. You guys see that I went around all the edges of the panels got them coated nicely check around all your edges you don't want to pull it out in the sun and see through your job so we are spraying with a special gun today that is a luma gun and it comes with a light on that and i'll show you guys in a minute they make a lot of special tools for us professionals now out here in the industry to get a better job so all right so let's go ahead and apply coat two okay now that we have our coverage on there and coverage means you cannot see through the paint anymore. So once you have your coverage done, and I was telling you earlier that Luma makes a lot of stuff, this here is a light for the spray gun. 
which gives you really good view of your coverage when you're doing these jobs, especially guys at home that don't have the best lighting. In here, I can see very good what I'm doing, but this is definitely a tool that will help you when you're doing jobs at the house if you have low light. So I've been using this here. I got it about a week ago and it's been really good for me. I've been enjoying using this here light. And now we're gonna move into our control code. So what a control code is, is making sure that your metallics are laid out nice and even. You do not wanna have blotchy metallic stripes in your paint. So what I like to do is get my coverage done and then I'll work on trying to lay out my base coats nice and even. That way I get a nice uniform bled. And what I'll do is I'll cut my pressure back. So if I'm spraying my base coat at about 18, when I turn down my pressure to about 13 when I'm gonna be doing my drop coat, which gives it a bigger pellet, which is more controllable. So if you have your pressure way up, that air is gonna move that metallic and dance it all around. And that is what's gonna give you the blotch when you're doing a paint job. So cut your pressure down, whether you're doing solvent or water base and give it a nice consistent coat to get your metallics to lay out. And that's what we're gonna do now. All right, so that's the control coat. That is a slower coat from a higher distance at a lower pressure. And that is gonna even out your metallics and give you a nice uniform finish. So that's what I do after I get coverage. You guys will wanna do the same thing. So one tip that I'm gonna give you is always do a spray out card. Even if you have that color verified from prior of a spray out, I like to do them also in the middle of the job to just make sure that my spray out card is still the same as the last one. Cause sometimes the manufacturers will change tints on you and you'll have a spray out and then they'll update something and uh, your match won't be the same anymore. So what I like to do from now and again is spray a card and check your color. So you see me clearing it. And now's the time also with that light that I showed you, you could turn the lights off if you're spraying in a booth, check your coverage, look at your metallics and make sure everything is ready before you clear it. So what we'll do now is we'll go over to the car, we'll check our spray out card before we clear this. That way, if we were to have to do something to this, we could still fix it before this paint job is finished up. So let's go check out our spray out. All right, so let's check our card to the fender now, cause this is the fender that we are gonna be panel painting. And you guys can see there that we have a good match. So I've had this spray out card now for a while, but I like to double check, make sure that they didn't change anything in the formula. And you guys can see there that that color is uh, very, very good. So we'll be good. So let's go ahead and get this thing cleared up and see how good the job comes out in the end. All right, so now we're gonna get into the clear coat. You wanna make sure that your base is completely dry, especially if you're spraying a water base because you will trap the water in the actual paint and then it won't be able to break out because you're putting a solvent on top of water. So. If you clear one that's solvent too soon, you'll get some dye back, but you won't have the issues that you will have with the water base. If you clear something in the water base too soon, it'll actually react. And sometimes you'll actually have to scrape that paint off because it will never dry because that water is trapped under the solvent. So never ever do that. So when you're clearing, you're gonna to wanna to get yourself a decent gun. You don't have to break the bank, but you wanna get something in the middle grounds. That way you're gonna get the best help and the best outcome of the job. So. In the description, I'll leave some items that I recommend using that aren't too pricey. And that way you guys can start off with something decent and get a decent job on it. So we are gonna be putting two coats of clear. That's what I recommend when you're using a good product. If you're using a thinner clear, you might wanna put three coats on. That way you actually get some build because a lot of the thinner clears don't have the mills that the premium clears do. We're using a real premium clear here. So we're able to do two coats. So. I'm gonna put this on at 23 PSI with the uh, Exodus clear gun. And you guys let me know what you guys think of it.
All right, so that's one coat of clear. We're gonna let that sit for about 10 to 15 minutes depending on the temperature that you're spraying in. If it's very hot out there, you can go in a little sooner, but you wanna make sure that you get all the solvents out of that product before you put your second coat on. That way you don't have any solvents trapped and you get your best gloss retention. If you're using a speed clear, some of them want you to do it back to back. That way you get all the solvents out at once so you don't trap any of them. So depending on what you're doing, look up your TDS sheet, look up how they want you to put it on, what temperatures you're spraying at, what gun they want you to use, and go accordingly to that. So we're gonna go in there and put one more coat on. I'm not gonna show you it, but I'll bring you back in and you guys will see it all finished up. I hope I helped you guys out on this one and uh, let's go see this one finished up. So that job there is a collision job. So we're trying to match the OE texture on that one. We're not going for a glass flat finish. So depending on what you're doing, if you're doing a custom job, you'll want to put it on wetter and you'll want to have something that maybe flows out a little better. But here at this shop, we're doing collision work, especially on this here job. And we're trying to match the OE texture. So that thing came out nice, came out clean. The job looks good. I hope you guys got some good tips out of it. If you did, give it a thumbs up. And if you're new to the channel, hit subscribe and we'll see you guys on the next one.